this talk is going to be around low dimensional non convex optimization. Low dimensional non convex optimization motivated, for example, by simulation optimization. All right, so let's get started. This work fits within uh, the literature of black box convex, uh, <laughs> convex uh, local optimization. So let's do a quick literature review. Uh, ideally, we'd like to minimize some arbitrary function. Uh, of course, this is going to be intractable in worst case. So instead, we want to opt for some sort of notion of approximate local optimality. And for simplicity, let's just say uh, an approximate uh, stationary point, but of course you can write down the second order uh, necessary conditions as well. Uh, and this kind of uh, literature is inspired by uh, the black box convex optimization theory uh, initially pioneered by Nemirovsky and Newton, where the goal, instead of finding a station, approximate stationary point, is to find an approximate optimal solution. So in this literature, um, the non-convex literature, much like the convex literature, you set up with some regularity assumptions on your function. So you assume the function is uh, bounded below, uh, and you make some assumption on the derivatives being Lipschitz. So that is, the derivatives are not moving too quickly. And in this literature, all known uh, iteration bounds on the algorithm, or well, algorithms, are dimension-free. So they have uh, no depend dependence on the dimension. And let's just have a quick look at what is, is known at the moment in this uh, black box local optimization literature. So you can look at the top for the most basic result. So that's the result for uh, gradient descent when you have a Lipschitz gradient. You get epsilon to the negative two. Uh, on the other hand, if you have the ability to compute second derivatives uh, and your Hessian is Lipschitz, then you can get epsilon to the negative 3 over 2, as Nesterov and Polyak showed. And then there are in-between results, uh, which show that you can get epsilon to the negative 7 over 4 when the first and second derivatives are Lipschitz, and epsilon to the negative 5 over 3 when the first and third derivatives are Lipschitz. Uh, and then there are also low bounds for these problems. Uh, as you can see on the right-hand column, and the major takeaway point, uh, well, the major important point from the slide is all these lower bounds are dimension-free lower bounds. So they break down the moment you have any iteration count that depends on the dimension. And so that's what we're going to be exploiting in, the, in this uh, paper. Um, OK, so the question we're asking is whether or not you can improve on Kubrick realized Newton epsilon dependence. Uh, so prior attempts to do this uh, needed access to an oracle for an essentially intractable problem, which is cortic regularization. So our approach is to use a cutting plane method. And like I say, we sacrifice dimension independence for improved epsilon dependence, uh, exactly as one does in convex optimization. So let's just recall what happens with a cutting plane method in convex optimization in Convex optimization, our algorithm, our, com our cutting plane method, has a d log 1 over epsilon uh, iteration count, at least if we're using a center of gravity, to find an epsilon optimal solution. And now each iteration, of course, um, requires uh, essentially solving a linear system. And this is the best epsilon dependence for uh, convex optimization. All right. so. Just for a quick refresher, for people who haven't seen cutting plane methods for a while, uh, here we've got a convex function, uh, and we're going to run a cutting plane method. We start with some ball um, where we know our optimum lies. We add in a cut, uh, which essentially says the optimal solution must lie on this side, and we can keep on doing that. Uh, we add another cut, and then we add uh, a third cut in there, and we've isolated essentially a region where the global optimum must lie. And eventually, that region gets very, very tiny, and then we've effectively found the global optimum. OK, let's see if we, what happens when we try to apply a cutting plane method in non-convex optimization. 
All right, here I have a non-convex function, and within this pool there is a, a local optimum. Uh, let's say I pick a point here as the center of my cut, uh, and then I pick another point over here as the center of my cut. You can see pretty quickly that we're going to have a region where there's no um, local optima in that region. So that seems bad. Obviously, we can't just vanilla apply uh, a cutting plane method. So in order to uh, get around this issue, we use what's called the convex until proven guilty principle. So this is uh, an idea that um, Yair, John, myself, and Aaron had uh, originally in the context of accelerated gradient descent. So in particular, you run an algorithm designed for convex optimization uh, for a fixed number of iterations on the function f. And either the uh, algorithm runs as, a conve as the convex theory predicts, or the algorithm does not run as the convex theory predicts. And then one needs to, or if one can obtain a certificate of non-convexity somehow, we can use this certificate to reduce the function value. And then if we uh, find a stationary point, then we terminate. Otherwise, we return to step one. So one question you might ask is, what is the convex algorithm? Like I say, uh, the original work was with accelerated gradient descent. Here, we use a cutting plane method. OK, and I want to emphasize as a principle, not a recipe. Um, but nonetheless, the really critical part is pulling out a certificate of non-convexity when the algorithm fails. So I want to give you a little bit of intuition on how to do this. Uh, so we're, if we go back to our slide where the cutting plane method was failing, what you can do in this particular instance, and you can do a similar sort of thing in the general case, so you take a gradient step, you then randomly sample a point in a ball around the point you took the gradient step to, you get a point like this, and then with very high probability, uh, you'll actually be able to look at one of your um, cuts and pull out a certificate of uh, convexity violation. Which, when you look at through the cross-section of those two points, looks like this. You can use that to reduce the function value and uh, uh, make this convex until proven guilty argument. OK. So what's the main result? Uh, what can we prove about the, the algorithm in this paper? Well, in particular, if you assume that the first and third derivatives of the function are Lipschitz, uh, and you assume that the function is bounded below, uh, then you can show that you can have a runtime uh, that's scaling with epsilon to the negative 4 over 3. Obviously, there is a, a dimension dependence there. And the main, the main point here is that we get a, a second order stationary point, so we get a, a point with a gradient less than epsilon and also actually a, a guarantee on the eigenvalue. Um, but, and this, uh, this runtime at least has a better epsilon dependence than cubic regularization of uh, Nistroff and Polyak. So that is the uh, end of the talk. Um, are there any questions? Any questions? Yeah, Nati? Yeah. So, the, um, okay, there's a, a little bit going on here. Uh, so, you can see the, I actually wrote down the computational operations here. Uh, so this has got a worse overall computational operations. So you probably actually shave this down to d to the three using some, uh, uh, but. Oh, in terms of Oracle accesses. Okay, so this is only accessing, well, okay, at least for the, for the stationary part here. So if you just want to get this guarantee, this is only get using gradient accesses and it needs uh, an extra d of them. Whereas here actually, uh, what's going on is you need right uh, d squared, uh, kind of, and because you're pulling out a Hessian, so you need one of them per iteration, but you're almost getting, it's almost like d squared gradient, uh, gradient iterations because if you want to find out difference out the Hessian, 
then you'd need uh, D gradients. Does that make sense? So in some ways, they're the same, sorry, the same uh, Oracle, comp well, in a, in a stupid model, they're the same Oracle complexity. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, that's it. Oh, like really, really low dimension? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, I have to take that offline to answer that question, but you can say something in low, very, very low dimension, yeah. All right, uh, let's thank the speaker again.